Welcome back, everybody, to this special free agency pre-draft episode of Speak Now. Um, in the previous episode, um, we talked about the sagas of Omar Jackson and Aaron Rodgers, as well as winners and losers. And today, we're going full draft mode. Everybody is hype, especially us Lions, and I'd, I'd argue us Pittsburgh fans as well over there for you, Jonathan. I think yes, we're pretty excited about um, the draft. Um I, me personally, never been more excited about a draft than this year. Detroit Grit, this regime itself, um, has got me pumped. And so for a mock draft, we're going to be altering picks. It'll be going Steve, Jonathan, and then me, and just keep alternating um, throughout the picks. There'll be no trades going on. And a um, little bit of banter between picks, but slight analysis, but it'll be pretty much just a run through. Um, of the picks and what we think the team should pick um, and how we think the um, first round should pan out. And I also should make that clear. We're only doing the first round because um, if we did all seven rounds, it'd probably take a very long time knowing us. So we yes. will be doing the first 31 picks of the 2023 NFL draft um, that will be coming up in two weeks now. So on the clock would be the Carolina Panthers here for Steve. Um, big pick here as they traded with the Bears. Yeah, I'm ready. I won't. Uh, I won't take the full ten minutes. Um, obviously, the uh, the pick was obtained from the Bears. Um, they gave up four draft picks and DJ Moore to to get that pick. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, um, CJ Stroud. Or sorry, sorry. I'm actually going to take that back. Bryce Young out of Alabama. Oh. Um, so. <laughs> Kind of said that because they're kind of going back and forth between all these quarterbacks. There's even rumors of it, um, Anthony Richardson. So I'm going to go with Bryce Young. Just think his football IQ um, is kind of way ahead of all the other quarterbacks. Um, he's had that competition in the SEC, playing against all those big time pass rushers. Um, he's got the speed. Um, again, the football IQ. I just think uh, Bryce Young is the pick. He's the more generational talent, in my opinion. You know, there might be some higher higher ceilings potentially with the other guys, but I'm going to go with Bryce Young out of Alabama. That's the pick they should make. I don't think they will make it. I think he's easily the best prospect, but I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to go Stroud. But I think I love that pick personally. Yeah, I think if you're picking number one overall, you got to go with the best overall quarterback. Um, I mean, the Jaguar, Jaguars didn't last year. They went Trayvon Walker instead. We see how that panned out for him. True. Yeah. I mean, especially with the quarterback position, there's a lot of like what ifs um, with a lot of with some of these guys. Obviously, Bryce Young. The biggest thing is going to be his size. Can he hold up in the NFL? And I'll be honest, like I question that. Um, I don't think we have that good of a track record of seeing guys his size be able to make it. But I think it's good to be in the South where it's warm. Obviously, for him and like you said, Steve, like his football IQ is just off the charts. Like if he succeeds, he's going to be like a, he could be a pretty much a generational guy. And he, if he is as advertised, he's going to make them instant contenders in the South. Um, I don't think that there's any other pick that they can, that they should go other than Bryce Young there. But yeah, so that'll bring up my pick, which is the Houston Texans pick. Um, so obviously options here, CJ Stroud is now available. Do they go Will Levis? Do they go Anthony Richardson? Um, uh, obviously there's an obvious need at quarterback here. So with the second pick in this year's draft, um, I'm going to pick for the Houston Texans, Will Anderson Jr. from Alabama. Weak. So here, here's my logic. Here's my thought behind this. He is the best player in this draft, hands down. You have a lot of holes as the Houston Texans. Um, you'll probably be picking like close top later. Um, I understand the need to go get a quarterback, um, but the Texans have finally uh, done their homework and they've seen the track record of Ohio State quarterbacks in the NFL. It's not that great. They decide to go best player uh, available, which is Will Anderson. Um, D'Amico Ryans is a defensive coach. You have so many holes here um, that I just go best player available. You have the 12th pick. You have later picks um, if you want to go quarterback. But let's let's build a competent team around Davis Mills first, and let's see kind of what happens there. 
Um, if a quarterback falls to you at 12, great. Um, but something that I think, and again, this could be all smokescreen, but of the prospects uh, that they're looking at, they've met with Will Anderson the most. They met with him at the combine, they met with him at his pro day, and they met with him uh, in a private uh, visit. So they, they have been doing their due diligence with Will Anderson. Um, I understand if they go quarterback here, but I think uh, that they should go with the defense. And this is something that they've done as a um, historically throughout their franchise, going Mario Williams first overall, Jadevian Clowney first overall. So it does seem like a Texans move to go defense here. I could potentially see that happening as well. Um, like you said, they have 12, they have 33. Um, they could take 33 and uh, move up into the first round and take like Hennon Hooker or Will Levis if he drops. Um, so, yeah, there is other options to take quarterback rather than totally, you know, not take someone like Will Anderson, who you could argue the, the Bears should have kept their pick and taken him at number one potentially um, just because of, uh, you know, the potential he has to basically be like Sauce Gardner was Pro Bowl year one. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Will Anderson is definitely in that conversation to, to have that happen. What I look at the Steelers almost with a pick like this um, and just how much of it, how, mu how valuable TJ Watt is for that team. Like the record that they have when he plays versus when he doesn't play is just, it's such a night and day difference. Um, and I think it just goes to show when you have an elite game changing uh, pass rusher, how that can just alter how you play the game. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's not the way I would go with it. I just think with the Texans, like you said, they've done this. You said it's a Texan move. And I think they got to go away from that classic Texan move. I can also see what you're saying. It's hard to pass up on a potential generational talent um, and another edge rusher, which they had J.J. Watt and Zach Allen. Or, no, I'm sorry. That, J.J. Watt's no longer on the team. But they've had like a J.J. Watt getting the next J.J. Watt and pass rusher be huge. Um, which, speaking of J.J. Watt, um, with my third pick, um, I think the Cardinals is a tough one. I think if it pans out this way, I think they most de they are they already have offers for the pick. I think they'd 100% trade back at this point um, and get extra draft capital, especially with the state of their team. But with no trade backs, um, you just got to go with the potential. So I'm going to go with Jalen Carter at the three. Um, there's tons of risk in that pick, but they lost Zach Allen. They lost J.J. Watt. Um, their defense is probably the weak point of their team, I'd say. Um, Isaiah Simmons so far has flopped. Zayvon Collins has flopped as a pick. They need somebody on that defense. Um, you want you don't want to give up on those um, previously mentioned guys, but I think Jalen Carter, um, the best defensive lineman in this draft, um, issues regarding um, outside of football, um, his work ethic in general, but I feel like it's a risk worth taking for the Cardinals. They already took a risk on Kyler Murray and his giant contract. I think it's worth the risk to take Jalen Carter at three. Yeah, I, I agree that they, they trade out of this pick. I don't see them picking here. Uh, someone else I could see going maybe not three, but if they trade back a little bit is uh, – Look for Tyree Wilson. He's someone that they've scouted quite a bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was the same alternate pick I had, had for them um, was Tyree Wilson. So um, also agree, but, uh, you know, you can't knock the Jalen Carter and the, the potential that, that he has there. And just, you know, watching the tape on Jalen Carter, he just mauls guys, um, mm -hmm. you know, all this legal stuff and, um, you know, the weight issue and, you know, workout you know, when you look at the tape is just, he's just crazy good in the middle and just, you know, you had N'Kobe Dean, you had Jordan Davis, you had all these other guys. And two years ago in those college football playoffs, uh, Jalen Carter just took over. I mean, it was him over all those other guys. So yeah, definitely huge talent. Um, for the fourth pick of the draft. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just kind of obvious where the, uh, where the Colts are at, you know, Gardner, Gardner Minshew is sitting as their quarterback right now. So I think you got to go CJ Stroud um, out of Ohio state. Um, 
you know, if you watch that playoff game last year with Georgia, you know, there was a targeting call and a missed field goal away. And, you know, we'd be talking about how phenomenal of a game he played against Georgia and really showed out and just skyrocketed his already high draft status. So um, I think there was a lot of question marks as far as him being elusive and winning some of those games, you know, losing the last two against Michigan and, and that sort of thing the last couple of years. But uh, I just, I just think they have to go see Jay Stroud. They need a quarterback, um, you know, maybe other boards, you know, this would be uh, Anthony Richardson or that type of pick, but uh, I think, you know, CJ Stroud, you take him all, you know, all day over Anthony Richardson, in my opinion. So uh, I'll take CJ Stroud for the Colts. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easy pick here. I think for sure. Um, best QB available for the Colts sitting at four. Um, I think they could be one of the people to potentially trade up to three for the Cardinals just to ensure um, them potentially getting that pick um, in Stroud, but nothing to argue with on that pick. Yeah, I don't have a f- any complaints there. I think if you're the Colts, you you are a QB away from contending with a running back like uh, Jonathan Taylor and just the way that their team is built. So, yeah, this is a dream scenario is CJ Stroud at four. All right, so I'm going to start the run a little bit here. Um, someone I really haven't seen mocked to Seattle at all um, is the guy I'm going to have them pick, which is Anthony Richardson, quarterback from Florida. And the reason why I'm going Anthony Richardson here is because they can have him sit uh, behind uh, Geno Smith for a year. Geno Smith actually has an out um, after year one in his contract, so if Uh, He's not a long-term commitment by any means, even though it was a three-year deal. Um, And they've met with Richardson both at the combine. They've done a private workout with him. So they've shown interest in at least going quarterback Um, and also being Seattle. Like they're, they're not guaranteed to pick uh, top five um, in the near future. Um, So this is a dream scenario. I'm, I'm sure they didn't expect to have the fifth pick from Denver. Um, They probably expected, uh, to pick much later. So this is kind of a dream scenario for them. Uh, they're just going to take a quarterback while they can. Yeah, that's a, it's definitely a somewhat of a wild card pick. Um, especially since Richardson's probably him and Levis are big question marks. Um, neither of them performed well in their game against each other. Um, watching portions of that game, it was extremely underwhelming, both quarterbacks. Um, played poorly their teams overall led them very poorly so it's a big question mark but I do feel like Seattle's built something decent in the past a little bit especially that Russell Wilson trade that they have the wiggle room to make um, I wouldn't say a luxury pick but a uh, kind of like a risky pick in a way yeah for sure you know they need to do something to to kind of put them over the top and they have some other picks later on in the draft so um, you know I don't I don't mind that pick at all um, so, uh, Eli, you want to go ahead, uh, with the next pick? Yeah. You know, um, my franchise, the Detroit lions, um, it's a tough one, obviously, um, with trades and everything, my dream scenario is getting Will Anderson. I don't think it'll happen, but from what I've been reading, um, Dan Campbell and regime are infatuated with this guy. Um, I thought about cornerback. There was cornerback by the first couple of mock drafts, but I just can't go that way when I've when I've seen Tyree Wilson's intangibles, pairing him with Aiden Hutchinson, and then also having James Houston come off the edge, Kaminsky and Bugs in the middle. I think Tyree Wilson um is a is a home run pick here for the Lions. I think the rich get richer on that D line. Um, near the end of the year, that defense really started to uh, come out of its shell. Um, Aaron Glenn's defense overall um, performed much better. And I think Tyree Wilson, I think they'd be ecstatic to land him at six. I think he could go earlier, um, kind of a wild card. But um, I love Tyree Wilson at six. Yeah, yeah I think. I mean, oh, go, go ahead, ahead, Steve. Yeah. I, um... I think this is uh, kind of a, a tough spot. I think a lot of uh, a lot of fans, in, including me, would would like to see uh, Will Anderson or Jalen Carter. So, um, you know, my question marks with Tyree are just kind of the production. He didn't really have the production in college. They're, the intangibles are there, but 
you know, you look at someone like Aiden Hutchinson, he had that production. So um, while they really like that guy, I almost feel like it's a, it's a smoke screen. So I would tend to lean cornerback, but I, I also, I, I can't argue with the pick. Yeah. I mean, I think building that, like we talked about earlier in the last episode, um, building the trenches has got to be the way to go. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't hate this pick at all. I think that this makes you guys a lot better um, on your D line. All right. With the, uh, with the seventh pick um, for the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, I think this kind of gives me an option. Um, I believe they're very weak at cornerback. So um, it's kind of a, who do you like better, Christian Gonzalez or Devin Witherspoon? Um, I, I think the Raiders will like uh, someone like Christian Gonzalez better. Um, I feel like he's a little bit more dynamic, flashy, um, you know, transferred to Oregon and, and really showed. Um, so um, I'm going to go with uh, Christian Gonzalez for the Raiders. I think it's a definite need of theirs. I think they uh, brought in a lot of pieces on offense and they need to fortify their defense, especially at cornerback. Yeah, I can't I, hate that pick. Oh, yeah, I like that pick a lot. Yeah, I, I think Christian Gonzalez is going to be a stud. Um, there's rumors of the Steelers trading up to nine. Uh, if they do, I hope Gonzalez is there, even though I – I'm almost positive he will not be because I would love for them to pick him. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that makes their team uh, instantly better. Yeah, I mean, I think picking for the Raiders anywhere on defense. I mean, they have Chandler Jones and Max Crosby. But other than that, I mean, pretty weak. So, I think um, hard to go wrong with that pick at all. I think they um, would be ecstatic to land him at seven. Yeah, so with the eighth pick, uh, I have the Falcons – this is a little interesting because you got a guy like uh, Will Levis who probably didn't expect to see there. Um, so do they go quarterback? I know that they've scouted him a little bit. Do you help your pass defense, which struggled last year with Devin Witherspoon? Um, but I, I, or do they go wide receiver, right? That kind of feels like a thing that Atlanta would do. I know that they just went Drake London last year. Um, but you have Jack Jackson Smith and Jigba, you have Quentin Johnston there. Um, but I'm going to have them go with, uh, Miles Murphy. So Miles Murphy early on in mock drafts and some of that was projected top 10. Um, he's been a guy that was really productive early on in college, kind of wasn't as much. So, so like later on into college, um, but he's got stud potential. I think, I don't necessarily think that that's the pick that they should make, but I think that's the pick that they're going to make watch it watch it be miles murphy or lucas van ness there um plus helping your pass rush will definitely help your uh defensive backs and your coverage yeah i can totally i can totally uh see that i mean i think there's going to be probably 10 to 12 edge picks in that first round if not more than that so everyone's looking to build in the trenches and you know there'll be offensive linemen which i'm sure we'll hit on here here shortly so uh yeah, I could definitely see that uh, there's something like with the Falcons, I believe in the last two years, they've had less than 40 sacks combined or something like that. So I really like that pick. Yeah, pretty hard to go wrong with that. It was, I think, between edge rusher and wide receivers to pick to go. But I think um, they have enough at wide receiver to get along. Obviously, they made the really questionable Calvin Ridley trade, mm -hmm. um, which would have been nice to have him right now to pair with London. But um, as you said, potentially getting on um, offensive linemen with the Chicago Bears, um, for me, having this guy drop to nine, um, I think is completely ideal for the Bears. I think it's their guy trading down um, from that one pick to nine. Um, Peter Skaronsky, I think, is um, an ideal pick for them. They only signed, like we said, Nate in the previous episode, Nate Davis in the offseason. So getting Skaronsky at tackle, um, protecting Justin Fields. We see what Jalen Hurts, which is a really elusive quarterback, what he does with an elite offensive line. And I think the Bears really got to punch that in the mouth here um, with um, offensive linemen and any picks to have. This is their – especially they really got to hit this one pick since it's really their, their one high-value pick in this draft. And I think it's in their biggest position of need, which is offensive line – 
and especially with the how the defensive line picks have fallen in this mock draft, um, Skaronsky is the best available on the O-line or D-line at this pick. Yeah, I like the Skaronsky pick. I think that he's going to be an absolute mauler. Um, I know the question is, does he play guard? Does he play tackle? Uh, for the Bears, it doesn't matter. They need offensive line help, especially they need someone that's going to block for their run game. I, I like that pick a lot there. I think I mean, pretty, pretty local too. So yeah, I think that's a great pick for the bears. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't, I don't think it matters. I think you got to do what you can to, to protect Justin Fields. Um, you got uh, Herbert and Foreman in the backfield. Um, I, I think the offensive lineman's kind of going to be the sweet spot for that, for that ninth pick, you know, whether it's Skaronsky or someone else, I, I think that's the pick. Um, with the 10th pick for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, you know, I think we talked about the Philadelphia Eagles in a, in a previous episode, just about how stacked their roster is. Um, you know, a team like this comes into a draft. They have uh, two picks in the first round. Um, you know, just uh, as far as what they do, they can, they can be a luxury pick. You know, you can go, you can potentially go running back, but I don't think they need to go there. Um, yeah, I think like we've talked about Rashad Penny, they have Boston Scott, Kenneth Gainwell. So I think they're going to continue to uh, to build that secondary. They have the loss of C.J. Gardner-Johnson, um, but they have a couple older corners in uh, James Bradbury and uh, Darius Slay. So I think they go Devin Witherspoon, and he can uh, play alongside of those guys and kind of kind of get in there uh, from Illinois and um, just a ball hawk, runs uh, sub 4-4, four, four and um, I just think he's going to be a stud for them at corner. And I think, you know, Bradbury and Slay only have a couple of good years left at most. So I think they need to reload at that position. Yeah, I think uh, the Eagles could have gone multiple ways in this um, this selection. Um, I um, I think they could have gone also D tackle as well and their DN. I feel like both of them, like you mentioned, aging, I feel like their whole defense in general. Um, they have a pretty old defense. Obviously, they have Jordan Davis and Nicobe Dean. But other than that, they have Brandon Graham. Um, Hassan Riddick's pretty young, so they have that for the edge. But then they also have Fletcher Cox, so pretty old. So I really feel like they could have gone anywhere, and it's pretty hard to miss on that. So I think Witherspoon, perfect pick there. Yeah, this is definitely a luxury pick for the Eagles. Like the rest of the NFL is going to hate the fact that they have a top 10 pick. Um yeah, Witherspoon, Witherspoon at 10 is great for them. Uh, so with the 11th pick, so I'm picking now with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, this one is a little bit harder for me. I'm kind of torn about where they're going to go here. Um, obviously, Will Levis at 11 would be clutch for them they've scouted him quite a bit had a private workout with him and went to his pro day like you don't go to kentucky's pro day unless it's for will levis uh they've also scouted quentin johnson quite a bit um they need offensive line help as well um so i am going to have them pick will levis go get your quarterback um i think another pick to watch for here is darnell wright He's someone that's kind of – some teams really love him. Some teams uh, don't think he should be a first-rounder, but he's been creeping up uh, in mock drafts lately. They had a local visit with him, obviously going to Tennessee. Uh, so he's someone I could see in play here. Um, I could also see Quentin Johnson like, add some wide receiver help to go with Traylon Burks. Uh, but we're going to go with Will Levis here. We're going to draft the QB of the future. Uh the benefit of getting a QB in round one is you get five years out of him, So he can sit, he can learn. Um, I know that there's concerns about his accuracy, uh, but there's also concerns about Josh Allen's accuracy. Obviously they're not quite the same size, but I think the potential is there. Um, I could see him slipping, obviously kind of sucks for Houston for Will Levis to go a pick before here, but yeah, we'll go Will Levis at 11. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't mind that pick at all. I think, uh, you know, we, we saw what happened with Tennessee last year. Um, you know, they, uh, they grabbed Malik Willis and, you know, 
he was a potential first round pick that went all the way to the third round. And I think uh, a lot of teams knew what, uh, what they were going to get out of Malik Willis and it was going to be a, a, par- a project at best. So um, I do like that. Uh, Will Levis pick, like you said, they could have went offensive line. Um, they could have went a couple different ways, wide receiver, I don't think as the as strong in this draft as it has been in previous drafts. So I, I like mm-hmm. the pick of the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, to, um, oh. yeah, go you ahead. can go. You go. Uh, I was going to say something else to point out too with the Titans is that Derrick Henry is twenty nine years old, so he he's a guy that gets a lot of reps. He's a big guy, so he is definitely durable, but he's getting old for a running back. So your window with him is creeping up. Yeah, I think uh, the Titans could have gone QB if they fall or wide receiver. Um, and like we said, unfortunate for the Houston. However, with the 12th pick, I think they get pretty lucky. I think they get their next DeAndre Hopkins and Quentin Johnson, who um, I will be selecting. I feel like Quentin Johnson is the best available wide receiver. We saw him against Michigan um, put on a show. Um, he showed his speed. And his deep threat ability, I think he can be a stud. And with Houston's wide receiver one being Nico Collins, I'd say at this point, um, I think a wide receiver needed. I think it almost benefits them um, with how this mock draft is falling to get Will Levis taken so they're able to make this pick and get a wide receiver that they haven't had. Um, They had Brandon Cooks, but they haven't had a wide receiver of a wide receiver one caliber since Hawkins. Yeah, personally, I would have went Jackson Smith and Jigba there. I think he's the best wide receiver in this class. Um, but I don't hate this pick. Um, I think Quentin Johnson is a physical freak. Um, right, like, I believe he's 6'4", or 6'3", 200 pounds. Like, he's, he's a good size wide receiver. And I, I think he might have the highest potential out of them. I think uh, JSN is probably your most complete wide receiver right now. I think Quentin Johnson has the biggest potential and yeah, they need, they need that wide receiver one, which is something that they've lacked uh, for Davis Mills. I know Brandon cooks is a solid receiver, but um, they need a big guy like this. I at this point with their draft, I'd say build, build a good team. See, see what you have with Davis Mills with a good team. And if you suck again, then (laughs) you get to go get a quarterback later. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Jonathan. I, Smith and Jigma would be my my top receiver, but I, I can't argue with uh, with taking that position and Quentin Johnson. So completely agree with all those points. Um, with the thirteenth pick of the draft, um, New York Jets. Um, I, I think with uh, you know Aaron Rodgers more than likely to join. I think you got to go offensive line. So it's just a matter of uh, who you take and. Um, the name was already thrown out there and I would have considered this guy for the bears just cause he's been kind of flying up the boards, um, just took on the, uh, SEC's best pass rushers and kind of succeeded every time. I think, uh, Darnell Wright from Tennessee, um, you know, he can start out playing at guard and then, you know, you have a couple tackles on their team, um, Dwayne Brown and Mecky Becton, um, you know, one's injured a lot and the other is aging. So I think uh, he started at a guard and he transitioned to tackle and you have a kind of a, a cornerstone um, for years to come. So I think uh, offensive line has to be the pick and I go with the guy out of Tennessee. Yeah, I think this is a sneaky pick for sure. Um, like we've said, like he's been flying up boards. Um, I remember being happy when the Steelers were going to get him at 32 in mock drafts and now here he is going at 13. So yeah, I don't, I don't hate this pick at all. Um, he provides you versatility too on the offensive line, which I think is, uh, he, he played left tackle in 2021, played right tackle, uh, this past year. That's probably where he profiles more. Um, but he is a guy, like you said, played on the other side, could play guard. Um, if you need him to, he's very versatile, um, had really good tape against Will Anderson. He only allowed like a pressure in the game and eight, eight pressures for the season. So. Yeah, he's a guy that I think has stud written on him. Yeah, really can't hate that pick. I think he could have gone Paris Johnson or Darnell right here. Um, I can't. I don't think he can go wrong with either. Um, but Darnell Wright playing against the SEC um, provides um, that you know he can play against um, NFL um, talent already. 
So um, pretty good pick there um, for the Jets. All right. And then with the 14th pick, um, I'm going to have, I'm having the Patriots select a guy that I think has some of the highest potential in this entire draft class. Um, but I understand why he hasn't been going higher. Uh, he's kind of seen as a tweener um, guy that succeeded a lot as a pass rusher in college, but might have to move inside based on size, but I think he'll be uh, just fine on the outside. And I think he's going to add a good pass rush for Bill Belichick's defense. And that's Nolan Smith from Georgia. And something to know about Nolan Smith too, is the Patriots have scouted him. They had a private visit with him. Uh, I do see Lucas Van Ness also being in play. I kind of went back and forth between them. Um, also, don't be surprised if they go wide receiver here. They've met with Jordan Addison at the Combine, and they did a private visit with him, as well as uh, Zay Flowers at the East-West Shrine Bowl in a private visit. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I really uh, compare him a lot to, uh, you know, the kind of moving up the boards like Trayvon Walker almost. So just the measurables and, um, you know, not necessarily all the stats, but when you're on a, a loaded team and, and with all that talent, you um, he just has a lot of potential, you know, the, the ceilings way up there for Nolan Smith. So yeah, I, uh, I like that pick a lot and it does, uh, it does, it does feel like a Patriots kind of pick as well. Yeah. On to pick 15, um, the Packers pick, this is a really tough one. Um, I feel like they could go a lot of different ways. They lost their number one wide receiver, their number one tight end. Um, they lack an identity um, other than Jair Alexander um, in the secondary. But overall, I think um, I got to go with a really versatile player for their defense. So I'm going to pick Brian Branch for the Packers. Um, I thought about going someone like Jackson Smith and Jigba. However, um, I just think um, – someone like a safety um, who could play a slot corner for them um, can move around the field a lot, I think is more essential for their team since they have Romeo Dubes and Alan Lazard already. Um, I think it was more necessary to um, strengthen the secondary. Yeah. I don't hate this pick. Uh, he is versatile. Um, 15 might be a little bit rich for him. I have seen him fall quite a bit recently, but are you going to have a shot at him in the second round? I would say no. Um, so got to go get him here again with JS, JSN right there on the board. Do you want to go help, uh, love out as best you can? Maybe. Um, I, I see that being hard or even going tight end with, uh, the tight end from Utah and then, um, Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. I think those could be in play there as well. Yeah, I, I agree with Jonathan. Um, with uh, with Aaron Rodgers, they went defense. I think eleven out of the twelve past uh, picks, eleven out of the twelve, uh, they went on defense. So I think they're gonna switch switch the tables there and probably go offense. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't mind that pick to to build your defense as well. Um, so for the sixteenth pick, um, the newly owned Washington Commanders. Um, I think I'm going to have to go cornerback. Um, Jonathan might not like this, but I'm going to go with uh, Joey Porter Jr. Um, I just think uh, his all-around game, being able to tackle, cover, um, obviously ha obviously his name's Joey Porter Jr., so there's there's the pedigree there. Um, so I just think, uh, you know, they, they probably have a lot of holes on their roster. Um, but uh, I think a dynamic playmaker that can kind of play a lot of different um, positions over in the secondary. Ultimately um, he is a cornerback, but I, I think he can kind of cover some different areas, probably even play safety slot corner outside. So I think Joey Porter Jr. is um, definitely the pick there. Yeah. I, I love that pick. Um, I, again, stud guy um, don't expect him to be there for the Steelers. So yeah, I, I think he'll, he'll be, he'll fit nicely with uh, Ron Rivera's defense. Yeah, I think corners definitely a need for them. You haven't seen them mock the corner super often. Um, a lot of people, obviously, their O-line could use a little bit of help. Um, QBs in question um, and linebacker 
don't really have a linebacker. Um, but I think Joey Porter Jr. is probably the best defensive player available at that point. So um, nothing to complain about for them. They get a, somebody who um, had a father in the NFL. Um, so I think it's a home run pick for the newly owned commanders. Yeah. And at the halfway point, we will take a quick break and we'll be right back with the remaining picks. All right, we're back from our break um, to recap the first half of this video. Uh, we had the Panthers picking Bryce Young, Texans pick Will Anderson at two, three, Jalen Carter to the Cardinals, four, CJ Stroud to the Colts, five, Anthony Richardson uh, to the Seattle Seahawks, uh, six, the Lions pick Tyree Wilson, the Raiders pick Christian Gonzalez at seven, Miles Murphy goes to the Falcons at eight, Peter Skorinski to the Bears at nine, the Eagles uh, get surprised with the fall of Devin Witherspoon at 10, Titans get their QB of the future and Will Levis at 11. Uh, new uh, wide receiver one for the Texans at Quentin Johnson at 12. Darnell Wright goes all the way up at 13 to the Jets. Nolan Smith uh, to the Patriots at 14. Brian Branch, the versatile safety from Alabama, goes to the Packers at 15. And JPJ, Joey Porter Jr., cornerback Penn State, goes to the Washington Commanders at 16. That brings us to pick number 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the best franchise in all of football to be a fan of, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think this is a dream scenario for them. So I will be doing the Pittsburgh Steelers pick, obviously, a huge fan. Um, dream scenario where they don't, they don't have to trade up for anyone. They get their guy. Their guy is right there for them at 17. Um the Joey Porter Jr. is just a smokescreen. They don't want him. They have their eyes on one guy only. It's a guy that Mike Tomlin has dined with, um, a guy where they have visited him for his pro day. He will be protecting Kenny Pickett's blind side for years to come, Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State. Yeah, I think that pick was – I was a little nervous you were going to go hometown collage. You can't see there. Um get the Pittsburgh product into the Steelers uniform, but I think that's the best pick for them. Got to, got to protect Kenny Pickett. Oh yeah. That, that Ohio State offensive line's loaded and uh, he's, he's the cream of the crop there. And uh, a lot of mocks have him going in the top 10 or 12. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's a, that's almost an obvious pick for the Steelers there. Yeah. Someone else to, to look for at 17, Lucas Van Ness. I've heard that the Steelers really like him. Um, don't be surprised if they go at rusher just because of how valuable it is for their defense. Um, I I don't think they need to go cornerback first round. I see a lot of cornerbacks mocked. At, uh, again, this is assuming that uh, one of the top three tackles are on the board, but if one of those guys are on the board, I feel like you almost have to go tackle because after them, it's just a huge fall off. Yeah, corner super deep in this draft, and they have a pick at 32 and 49. So, yeah, completely agree. Yeah, that leads me to um, two homer picks in a row. We got the Detroit Lions on the clock. And this pick is close to being considered a luxury pick. I mean, I for me, um, based off how the first pick went in this mock draft, there's one position – that I think um, is most necessary here. Like, I'd love to take Jackson Smith and Jigba, but it's not needed. I'd love to take Bajan Robinson. I don't think it's needed. We just signed David Montgomery. We have DeAndre Swift another year. I think, if anything, you pick a running back in next year's draft. Um, if Swift doesn't pan out and you have Montgomery um, to pair with him, so I've been going with a guy who's been shooting up draft boards recently. I didn't see him um, at the start of my drafts. Um, but Deontay Banks, I think that's a, um, a good pick for the Lions. Just trading Jeff Okuda, um, a guy who only had 26 receptions um, on him this past year um, and only 258 yards. And, and those statistics, not far off of what Devin Witherspoon had against them. Um, had four touchdowns against them and only had one interception. So that's where they differ a little bit. Um, and obviously Devin Witherspoon is just phenomenal in that zone coverage and run help. 
But I think Deontay Banks falling to 18 here, really beneficial for the Lions. Um, I think it'll solidify their defense in total um, and will give them a lot more flexibility in their future picks in the draft. Yeah, really crazy that all these uh, Big Ten cornerbacks are getting drafted. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've seen uh, Deontay Banks also kind of flying up the boards, seen him possibly going to the Steelers, seen him going down around, you know, mid-20s, low-20s. So, um, yeah, I've uh, I've seen Deontay Banks kind of rising up the boards recently. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. When you were saying luxury pick, I thought that, you were going to go Jackson Smith and Jigba, which I wouldn't have hated. Actually, I think that gives you a nice trio of wide receivers, but I think this is a phenomenal pick for them. I think Deontay Banks is essential to be the best cornerback of this class. He's super sticky and physical, and I think he fits what uh, Detroit is trying to build in their culture. Um, I wouldn't hate him going to the Steelers at 17. Um, like I said, I think he could be the best cornerback in this class just because of how physical he is and how able he is to stick with uh his wide receivers yeah for sure i actually was about to write down Bijan robinson when Eli made that comment so uh, i was <laughs> thinking I the other way i really thought about yeah. picking him but yeah it would not need it at all yeah i I, uh, I wasn't thinking smith and jig but just because of uh you know maybe the parallels to possibly i'm on st brown so i just i just didn't see that being a pick either so um, with the 19th pick of the draft, um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers um, could go in a, a couple different directions here. Um, you know, if, if, if a quarterback falls, they could go in that direction. Um, you also have their tight end rooms a little bit weak. Um, offensive line, Tom Brady was constantly on his back last year. Um, you know, they, uh, I believe their left tackle is still a, a free agent, so um, I think I'm going to have to go offensive line here and go with uh, Broderick Jones out of uh, Georgia. So super athletic, um, still, I, I think maybe a little bit raw, but just, uh, you know, another freak out of the SEC. And uh, I, I just think they have to kind of rebuild in the trenches and, um, you know, they still have some talented pieces, obviously at wide receiver and, um, you know, Baker did show a little bit last year. I'm not really a fan of his, but, you know, he can win some games for them. And I think ultimately they need to, um, you know, snag a quarter, another quarterback at some point. But uh, I think there's quite a few holes to fill on that roster. Um, you know, they really had trouble getting above 500. I don't even think they got above 500 in a, in a really weak division last year. And I think Atlanta and Carolina have overtaken them. So I think they kind of need to rebuild that roster. So I'll go with uh, Broderick Jones. Can't hate, like you said, lots of ways to go in this uh, pick. And I think he went in the best way possible for the Bucks, rebuilding their offensive line and hopefully building Rashad White, getting him some confidence without Leonard Fournette and getting Baker Mayfield more comfortable. I think that was the way to go. Yeah. Uh, as a general rule for me, I think that if you're a team that has many needs and like you really could go anywhere in the draft, your best bet is to start building your offensive line and your defensive line. You need to protect your quarterback um, when you get him. You need to protect Kyle Trask or Baker Mayfield, whoever is going to be uh, the guy there. Um, Broderick Jones is a guy that's just a mauler and he, he he's just built uh, well. I he'd be a good consolation prize for the Steelers. If Paris Johnson was in there, if he happens to be there, I could see him going much higher, but I think that this is a, a good scenario for the Buccaneers to get Broderick Jones at 19. So that brings us to pick 20. Um, so Seattle went and they got their QB one of the future in uh, Anthony Richardson. Since Broderick Jones is gone, I, he was in consideration to help build the line there. Um, Someone I think that could be in consideration uh, at this pick, but would probably be better suited for their uh, pick in the second round is Keely Ringo. They've scouted him a lot. Um, he's worked out with Richard Sherman quite a bit, obviously icon there. So I think that they can wait. Um, and someone else that they've looked at is Dewan Jones. So I think they can go get, wait till the second round, get one of those two guys. Um, so here in the first, I'm going to help them build their defensive line out. They're going to stop the fall of Lucas Van Ness. 
Yeah, I thought once again, I thought you might go um, Kalaj Jacanti there. Um, but I think all of the Seattle D-line needs help. I think that's probably the weak spot of their defense with the return of Bobby Wagner. And um, we got the secondary in Tariq Woolen um, and Jamal Adams coming back this year. Um, and I don't think um, the linebacker, the name's, the name's catching a blank right now, um, that got hurt. He was the NFL tackle leader who tore his ACL at the end of the year this year as well. Um, don't think they'll get him back. So I think D-line was the right way. Yeah, I, I like that pick. I know I've heard some concerns about, uh, you know, him having limited moves. He's super athletic. Um, you know, I think uh, some of that stuff might be able to be developed with the right coaching, but, uh, you know, they definitely need help on that, on that pass rush. So I think they got to go edge and, um, you know, I think he has a super high ceiling. So I think you're getting to that point where, you know, you're past those top few can't miss guys and you're, you're kind of, uh, you know, it's still the first round, but, uh, you know, it, it starts going, it starts going downhill a little bit, but, uh, I think Lucas Van Ness has even been talked about in the top 10 to 15 picks. So, um, I think that's a really good pick. Yeah. Um, this is probably easily my toughest pick thus far. Pick 21, the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, some have mentioned wide receiver at this position. Um, I don't think this year is the way to go for wide receiver. I think Mike Williams and Keenan Allen and DeAndre Carter will do for another year in the wide receiver position. Um, linebacker, I think it's a reach for all the linebackers in a very weak linebacker class. I don't think any of them stick out at 21 for me. And the cornerbacks I've been taking, um, I, I think it'd be a reach as well. So I'm going to go probably the first surprising pick or arguably the most surprising pick um, of the draft thus far. And I'm going to go B. John Robinson. For the Chargers on the wake of Austin Eckler um, soon getting traded. Um, I don't think he'll stick with the team this year. I think B. John Robinson's the way to go. I thought tight end as well for them. Um, I just thought everything else would be a reach for them. I didn't see any quarterback that I liked for them, and they still have Asante Samuel already, um, as well as Derwin James. So I think B. John Robinson is kind of a luxury first round pick for them. Um, a lot of people say he's going to fall a little further to the Cowboys. Some people have said even him going as far up as 18 in the 15 range. But I think replacing Eckler and aging Eckler who wants out um, is the way to go for them. Very interesting. Um, I mean, I, uh, I think a skill position is definitely the way they go. So, I mean, I was, I was totally thinking wide receiver. Um, I, I think with Smith and Jigba there, that, that would be, that would be my pick, but, uh, I mean, Bijan Robinson, to your point, you know, Eckler is pretty much saying, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to play this year and see where it goes from there. So, um, Eckler is not really the, the three down guy. They keep trying to bring in other guys. He's really that red zone, you know, 50, he's getting the 15 to 20 touchdowns, kind of stealing the thunder from Herbert. Um, for some of his touchdown stats, but uh, I think Bijan would be, you know, perfect complement and then pretty much take over next year. So I don't hate that pick. Yeah. He, he's the best running back in this class. Um, I have a hard time passing up JSN at this position. Um, give Justin Herbert another weapon. I just think I don't, I'm not anti first round running back. I just think it's hard. I think with the running back class that he is here, I think you could get someone, later on um in this draft i would i would go jsn but i think b jen robinson is going to be a boss so yeah you can't hate it all right with the uh 22nd pick of the draft i've got the uh baltimore ravens um i was going to go in a different direction but uh i feel like they have obj bateman um there's a whole thing with lamar um i just got to go jackson smith and jigba here um I, I feel like they've neglected, you know, wide receiver over the years. And um, I think kind of like a lot of these teams are doing, they're just stacking positions. So um, one of my initial thoughts was actually to, to grab Hen and Hooker here. 
Um, but I, I just, I just, I feel like that would cause a, a lot of issues this year. And I, I don't really see it as necessary, you know, for someone that's not even going to play this year. And also um, thought about cornerback a little bit as well. Um, someone like Cam Smith, but uh, um, I just feel like that position's deep. My only concern there is the Ravens don't pick again until 86. So, um, you know, obviously there'll be a drop off by then, but uh I think Smith and Jigba is just too too enticing here for them to to not take. And the the Ravens are they know how to build a team. They're a smart organization. So definitely see that as the pick. I think Wayne agrees. Um yeah, if ja- if Jackson Smith and Jigba is here at twenty two, if you're the Ravens, you gotta go get assuming Lamar is your quarterback, at least for this year, go get him the weapons and then you erase like any 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 doubts like of the quarterback he can be because then all the people that are like that are out there talking about how he's never had a real wide receiver room hasn't had top guys besides Mark Andrews like now there's no no excuse if you have OBJ uh, JSN Mark Andrews uh, Rashad Bateman like you have weapons for your quarterback um, and in the AFC North I think you need to add some firepower to contend with the Bengals and the Steelers and the Browns. Um, so yeah, if he's there, I think that that's got to be the pick as a Steelers fan. I hate the fact that he's there for them, <laughs> but yeah. So picking at 23 is the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Vikings are kind of in a similar boat with the Ravens in the sense that they don't pick again until the third round. So they're uh, kind of an interesting spot, obviously giving up their second uh, for TJ Hawkinson um and so for that reason i think that they're going to reach a little bit here uh because they're going to get a guy that they really like um and a guy that is the best at his position but would have probably been there for them in the second round but they don't have a second round pick and that's john michael smith from minnesota center from minnesota um he is someone they have scouted a lot um not only did they do a local visit with him they did a combine visit they did a private visit so they've shown a lot of interest uh in him um, if it's not him, I could see them going wide receiver here, obviously with Zay Flowers and Jordan Addison still available. Um, I think that those guys could be interesting, sp- interesting picks. Um, but I think that you can get a wide receiver later in the draft. And I think um, in terms of interior offense alignment after the second round, it's going to be a lot thinner. Yeah. yeah. Tough spot for Minnesota. I mean, uh, yeah, I, Offensive line is definitely important. Um, cornerback, they're 31st rate of defense against the pass. They did add Byron Murphy. Um, cornerback is, I mean, they should still be able to get someone in the third round with that pick. Um, but to your point, you also now have, uh, I believe it's KJ Osborne as your number two. So, um, yeah, I think there's there's some holes to fill there. So, um, you know, just another uh, feather in the cap for, for the Lions, kind of hopefully, you know, taking that division over. Yeah, I yeah. think I would have uh, potentially even gone uh, a defensive lineman as well. I think Daniel Hunter, really, they're only established um, defensive lineman. They um, addressed a little bit of free agency, but I would have, wouldn't have minded the D tackle there as well. But, yeah, um, I, yeah. I could see the Vikings being kind of like one of those faux contenders this year. Um, I believe uh, Kirk Cousins is in the last year of his deal. They're a team that's got to start looking towards the future. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're in a weird position. We've seen some mm-hmm. speculation. Um, but we'll see where they go regarding Kirk Cousins and such. Uh, the 24th pick, Jacksonville Jaguars, where we kind of we slandered them a little bit the last episode, um, where they were looking like they were turning into a contender and looking like they were going to take over the AFC South and didn't really do much. Um, and they're kind of uh, – Kind of in a weird position as well. Um, I don't really think cornerback is um, a need here. They have Tyson Campbell emerge last year. They have Darius Williams and such. Then um, Rayshon Jenkins as a safety who had some stud games. So uh, this is a really tough one. But I think once I think they're going to reach as well. I think they're going to get B.J. Ojolari from LSU, um, an edge rusher, um, to pair alongside 
Um, um, their first round pick last year, um, number one overall pick. He uh, Walker didn't Trayvon Walker didn't exactly. I wouldn't say go crazy last year. Um, put up some good stat, decent stats. However, I think pairing Ojolari in the other side um, will benefit the both of them. Ojolari, um, brother in the NFL um, on the Giants at Z's, um, and he played for LSU. Um, didn't have fantastic statistics. Um, but I think could really um, help that Jaguars D line that um, pretty much their weak point of the defense. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, he was a team captain for LSU, like you mentioned. His brother, brother plays in the NFL. Um, I think you got to pick in the trenches. Um, one of my thoughts was maybe Osiris Torrance there because I know they need some help on the interior offensive line. But uh, I do like a pick in the trenches. Yeah like we talked about, they need to do something to help with their pass rush. Um, and yeah, just hoping that he can develop next to Walker. That'd be uh, pretty solid. I think he's a sneaky guy that could be really solid for, in this league for a while. All right. With the uh, 25th pick of the draft, I've got the uh, New York giants um, could go offensive line. Um but uh, I feel like wide receiver, you need to help out there. So there's, there's a couple guys. So um, I'm going to go with uh, Jordan Addison out of uh, USC. So just, uh, you know, someone in the slot, going to catch a lot of passes, just more of a, a safety valve. Um, just feel like, uh, you know, Richie James leaving. Um, and even so, I think Addison would be an up- upgrade over him regardless. So I just think they need to add to that room and, you know, give some weapons beyond Daniel Jones running or handing it off to, to Saquon Barkley. And you could even go tight end at this pick. So I think they need to, uh, you know, put some more weapons on that offense. So whether it's, uh, I think they need to go beyond just picking uh, offensive linemen, you know, maybe they fill a guard later in the draft. Um, that would be more of a luxury for them. So I think they need a weapon on offense. So I'm going to go with Jordan Addison. Yeah, I think this is about the right spot for Addison. Um, performed extremely well um, the year before at Pitt with Kenny Pickett. Um, this year, disappointed a little bit. He had a couple of good games, um, injured for the most part, kind of saw his draft stock fall. He's supposed to be with Jackson Smith and Jigba, the top guy this year. Um, but I think New York has to take the best available pass catcher um, you got to give your uh, forty million dollar year man Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, some uh, some help, mm-hmm. and I think that'll do just that. Yeah, he's a great route runner. I think he's going to be a guy that can get open uh, for New York. So I, I like that pick there. So that brings us to the twenty second, twenty sixth pick, and that's the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, they could go a couple options here. Um, obviously with Bijan Robinson off the board, I think that kind of messes with them a little bit, uh, could go linebacker here. It'd be a little bit of a reach, but wouldn't it surprise me for them, uh, as when they're picking again, a lot of guys could be gone. Um, but I'm going to go with maybe this might be a little bit of a reach for them. Uh, but what they need, uh, what they need is they need someone that can help stop the run. Uh, they were a pretty solid team. If you look at rankings last year, um, they were a middle team when it came to rushing yards allowed as a defense. Um, and they were also like one of the bottom, they had the most rushing, one of the most rushing attempts against them. So they need someone that's just going to deter teams from running, running on them. And I think this is a Jerry Jones pick um, through and through. And I'm going to go with Mozzie Smith uh, from Michigan. Um not afraid of the of the gun charges there. Uh, Jerry Jones has done his due diligence. He he's fine taking him. Obviously, this is the same owner that took Randy Gregory uh, way back in the day. So, yeah, Mozzie Smith to the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I mean, definitely, just uh, you know, a, a freak athlete inside. You know, maybe. Uh maybe Jalen Carter light, but, uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's, he's definitely, uh, could wreak havoc in the middle. And, uh, like he said, like we've reiterated many times, building in the trenches, building on the line. So, 
Um, just so many weapons on that defense that uh, someone like that's going to be able to thrive and get one-on-one -on -one matchups. Yeah, I like the position pick. I'm not sure if I would have picked Mossy Smith over some of the available prospects. Um, personally, I, I like Cansey and Breezy a little better than Mozzie Smith. Um, but at the same time, um, Mozzie Smith um, put out better stats than both of them, and especially this past year really wreaked havoc, so you also can't hate on it. Um, 27th pick, the Buffalo Bills. Um, this is a really tough one again. I feel like the Bills – don't really need a ton. Um, they lost um, Tremaine Edmonds and such, I think. However, um, with injuries with um, Tredavious White and their safeties getting older, I think the way to go for them is cornerback. Um, so I do think that they are going to go – might be a little bit of a reach, but I think they're going to go Emmanuel forwards from Mississippi State. Hmm. Um, he in the uh, SEC only gave up 31 receptions for 284 yards and had six picks last year um, so this guy's a ball hawk and I think he's been rising up draft boards I haven't seen him um, in the first round before and he's been popping up all of a sudden and he's at 6'1 so decent size for a cornerback um, he's a very versatile cornerback so I think Emmanuel Forbes would be a good pick for the bills to solidify that secondary. Yeah. I don't, I don't hate the position. I mean, I know uh, he is, I believe he's 165 pounds. So I have a little bit of concern um, with his durability. Um, I do like uh, Cam Smith and Keely Ringo a little bit better uh, on my board, but uh, I mean, I agree with all the points that you made. Yeah. I think Manuel Forbes has the potential to come in and just, uh, be a superstar with his ball skills. I agree with Steve. I think uh, the physicality um, of this game and the position that he plays and his style of play uh, with, at his size could really hurt him, especially in Buffalo in that cold weather. But um, I like the high risk, high reward mentality and with this, with this pick. All right. With the uh, 28th pick of the draft, we've got the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, could go a couple different directions here. Um, you know, branches already off the board. I mean, that's probably someone they'd be looking at as far as safety. Um, they did lose Von Bell and Jesse Bates, um, but I think there, there's no reason to reach at this point for a safety. Um, could go offensive line to protect Burrow, uh, but they did sign Orlando Brown. Um, linebacker, they resigned Jermaine Pratt. So I think um, the one loss they had was Hayden Hurst, which I, th I think they can easily upgrade with uh, – the tight ends that are available in this draft. And uh, it just so happens they can pick whoever they want at this draft at this point of the draft. So it's whether I want Michael Mayer or Luke Kincaid is kind of what I'm looking at at this point. Um, there might be some others, but uh, um, according to reports, his backs checked out. He had 900 yards, eight touchdowns at uh, Utah. I, I'd have to go with Luke Kincaid um, over met over mayor. Um, just think, uh, there's more upside kind of overall with blocking, catching the ball, you know, kind of the whole package. So I'll go with Luke Kincaid at this point for the Bengals. Yeah, a team as good as the Bengals is going to be kind of a luxury-ish pick. I think, yeah, adding a dominant tight end to that passing offense is just going to make them even more scary to face. Yeah, um, I think that's the position they need. Um, didn't address it in free agency at all. It wasn't really anybody available. And I think um, all the tight ends falling to them here is their ideal situation. And they can get the whoever, whatever pass catcher they want. All right, picking at 29 for the Saints. They have quite a few needs, um, according to Pro Football Focus. Um Again, I think this is a team where it's like you're building, you're building on the trenches uh, with this pick. Regardless, um, with Derek Carr coming in, like you want to build the line to keep him uh, upright, and then on the defensive side, like you want to build to to stop the run and to go get the quarterback. Um, again, they were a middling team when it came to uh, stopping the run, 
uh, last year. They also could go defensive back here. They uh, were one of the bottom teams in terms of getting interceptions and uh, turnovers are huge in this game. So they could go in a variety of different ways here. They also pick at 40 in the second round. So um, there could be guys available. Um, I think guys to look for here are Torrance, are um, if Breesy and Cancy are really here, maybe one of those guys. Uh, I know that they've scouted Keon White. He could be there in the second round, though. Um, but yeah, we're gonna um, we're gonna keep going with this run on uh, defensive backs in the first round. They're gonna go Cam Smith from South Carolina, versatile cornerback, can play the slot, can play safety. Um, I like the options of getting either a defensive lineman or a uh, guard in the second round. Um, I'm going to go Cam Smith because I don't think he's there when they pick at 40. Yeah, I uh, I think that's a solid pick for him. Um, I do think a corner would be helpful. I think they're aging the line as well. They just lost um, – um, you got Cam Jordan aging, and they lost um, their top – I had Troy last year, I believe Marcus Davenport. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, yeah, Marcus Davenport to the Vikings. Um, mm-hmm. So they lost at the end. Um, so that doesn't help them. But I think corner pairing with uh, Marshawn Lattimore um, would be a solid pairing. Yeah, I think, um, too, someone to watch for at 40, if not actually at 29, is Keon White. He's a freak athlete, a lot of potential. Um, older guy for the draft i think he's like 24 ish um but don't be surprised if they they go him at either 29 or 40 i think he'll be there at 40 which is why i have them going cornerback here yeah i like i like the pick you got uh you know sec cornerback so uh kind of similar traits to forbes you know maybe a little bit more size but uh you know maybe some of the same concerns but you know grade similar maybe even a little bit higher um so yeah i like that pick and now, pick 30, the second to last pick here, the Eagles. And this right here is the definition of a luxury pick. And I think they will do just that. I think when you have a luxury pick like this, um, the rich get richer out of position. I think they have to go wide receiver here. Um, they lack a third wide receiver on their roster. Um I think that's what they lack in offense. Um, I really thought about going Jameer Gibbs here for them. But I, after, I, the amount I talked up Rashad Penny, um, I think he's going to be their lead guy. And I think this guy is the best wide receiver in this class. I will say it now. I think he will end up being the best intangible-wise. I did say Clint Johnson. But I think this guy will be the best, and that is Zay Flowers. Yeah, I definitely uh, considered him earlier um, and it would between Jordan Addison and him. So yeah, I like, I, I see similar with, with him out of Boston college, some similar traits there. So um, yeah, I like that pick. Yeah. You might as well bolster your offense. The most you can give Jalen hurts all the weapons in the world. Um, obviously with F- Fletcher Cox getting older, I could see them uh, going Defensive line here with Breesy and Kansi still on the board. Um, I think those would be valuable picks. And the Eagles are a team that likes to build the trenches. You also got guys like Osiris Torrance that are available. So I think those guys can be in play. Um, but I think this makes their offense even more scary. So I, I like the Zay Flowers pick. He's very good at getting open. Um, and I think that's going to be a huge benefit for their offense. All right, with the uh, last pick of the draft, uh, pick 31 this year, um, Kansas City Chiefs. Um, thought about wide receiver a little bit. Thought about Jameer Gibbs. Uh, but I think with uh, with Frank Clark leaving, I, th- I think they, you know, kind of the whole theme with the trenches. So um, I think this board fell maybe a little bit different. So, I mean, I, we they have their pick of Brian Breesy or Kalaja Kansi. So it's, uh, you know, pick who you want to. Uh, I feel like uh, Kalaja Kansi might be a little ver- more versatile along that line and uh, be able to work with Chris Jones and some of the other young talent they have, Karlaftis on that line. Um, so I like uh, Kalaja Kansi with that pick. Yeah, 
I think he fell um, further than I expected. So I really like that pick. Um, I think he has to go in the first round. And, um, I mean, he has really similar intangibles to Aaron Donald. So that's scary if he ends up turning into another Aaron Donald. Um, for the for the sake of the league, I sure hope he doesn't. But um, he has all the intangibles to become the next Aaron Donald. Yeah, I agree. I think when you're picking where the Chiefs are picking and when you're as good a team as the Chiefs are, uh, you can afford to take a gamble on Kalaja Kansi. Um, yeah, the ceiling for this guy is so high. Um, like, yeah, um, I wouldn't hate the Steelers picking him at 17. Uh, that's just how high I think uh, that ceiling is uh, for him. Um, I think that that's, yeah, a luxury that he he fell in. I think it's a real opportunity that he will fall. Uh, he could go anywhere from the top 10 to second round. Yeah. Um, overall, um, with no trades, I think this definitely um, pans out a lot differently um, than what you see on a good old Todd McShay um, uh, mock draft. Like you see uh, the quarterbacks fall a little differently. You see Willie Anderson going at two, which has been a new um, development recently. We've seen that actually be a possibility within the Texans organization. And someone like uh, Michael Mayer falling out of the first round. But overall, good mock draft, guys. Let's clap it up for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, My apologies to Mr. Kincaid. It's Dalton Kincaid, not Luke Kincaid. Sorry about that, buddy. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want. I didn't <laughs> want to correct, but um, combining Luke Musgrave with Dalton Kincaid. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, that mock draft. Uh, we're all excited for here. Um, my, um, the draft is in about two weeks. Um. Our next episode will be post draft, where we'll give our reflections on the draft, um, insights on our teams, um, other teams, probably another winners and losers segment um, based off the draft. Um, as previously, someone like the Jets was the winner, clear winner last year, and there's clear losers last year. So we'll see how that turns out. As this has been another free agency episode of speak now thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful draft week we'll see you after that salute